the new members of the International Space Station's Expedition 36 crew come from three different countries, but share a common trait. Each has wanted to fly in space since childhood. Fyodor Yurchikin was born and raised in the Black Sea port city of Batumi in Soviet Georgia, growing up in a time and place where all the children wanted to be cosmonauts, where the winners of kids' games were called Gagarins. Yurchikin wanted to be a part of that life, even if he couldn't be a dashing test pilot. For what reason I understood maybe in this day, in this time, then uh, it's maybe in my health, it's not enough to be a cosmonaut, but what is more important for me, be a pilot or be an engineer in space program. Of course, the space program, it was too important for me. So after high school, Yurchikin went to the Moscow Aviation Institute, earned a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering specializing in aerospace vehicles, and went straight to work for the Rocket Space Corporation Energia as an engineer. He worked as a flight controller, and when he became lead engineer for the Mir shuttle program, he spent time at NASA's Johnson Space Center supporting that effort. Yurchikin was selected as an Energia cosmonaut in 1997 and earned a Ph.D. in economics at Moscow Service State University while preparing for his first space flight. He was a member of the STS-112 crew that delivered a piece of the station's starboard truss during Expedition 5 in 2002. He returned five years later on a Soyuz spacecraft as commander of Expedition 15 and made three spacewalks and followed that with two more EVAs as a station flight engineer on Expeditions 24 and 25 in 2010. He believes the station program is paying off in the things we're learning while making the effort, from improving the spacecraft themselves to the tools we develop. But the first big, exactly great sensor for digital cameras, it was factored for this program. And now it's usual for everybody. It's usual for my daughters. It's usual for young boys and girls. I know my profession, it's very important for human. Why I am on this road. Italian Air Force Major Luca Parmitano is from Sicily, born in Paterno and raised in Catania in the shadow of Mount Etna. Although he was very young when he saw the first space shuttles fly on television, he was captivated by the idea of what those images represented. So I remember seeing the, the first astronauts floating around, uh, around the space shuttle doing, doing their job. And I think that even in a kid, as small as I was, I, I just thought that must be the greatest job in the world to be able to do those things and, and, and call it a living. So since then, I, I had the, this dream of becoming an astronaut. Parmitano won a scholarship to spend a year of high school in Southern California. In that year in America, he not only intensified his desire to be a pilot by living with a host family in which the father was a marine navigator, but he met the girl who years later would become his wife. Back in Italy, Parmitano earned a bachelor's degree in political sciences at the University of Naples and graduated from Italy's Air Force Academy then completed his basic training at the Euro-NATO Joint Jet Pilot Training Program at Shepard Air Force Base in Texas. After six years with a fighter squadron in Italy, he was sent to France to train as a test pilot and earned a master's in experimental flight test engineering at the Superior Institute of Aeronautics and Space in Toulouse in 2009, the same year he was selected for astronaut training by the European Space Agency. Now he's making his childhood dream a reality and fulfilling a desire to push the boundaries of human knowledge. That's who we are. That's what makes us humans. Uh, that is what makes us uh, different from, all, from the rest of the, uh, of, of the animal kingdom. And if we don't follow our, of our nature of being explorators, of being thinkers, then we are denying a part of ourselves that is incredibly important. Dr. Karen Nyberg was part of a big family growing up in the tiny town of Vining, Minnesota. And from the time she was a very young girl, she knew she wanted to be an astronaut, although she doesn't know why. She learned some solitary pursuits as a little girl. I've been sewing. My mom taught me to sew when I was probably five or six years old. I've been drawing since I was also that age. I used to, I would never sit in front of the television just sitting there watching TV. I always had a piece of paper and a pencil and was drawing or doodling or doing something. 
but she took advantage of being in a small town to join more school activities than most kids in big city schools join. I was on the basketball team, the volleyball team, the track team. I took stats for the baseball team. I was in the choir. I was in the band. I was in the drama club. I was able to participate in all of them, um, learn to be a team member. She went to the University of North Dakota to study engineering and learned about a program that lets students work at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Nyberg worked as a co-op in Houston while finishing her bachelor's in mechanical engineering in Grand Forks and while starting her graduate work at the University of Texas at Austin. After she finished a master's and a doctorate in mechanical engineering in Austin, she returned to JSC, working full-time in the Crew and Thermal Systems Division for two years before she was picked for the astronaut program in 2000, where she met her future husband, fellow astronaut candidate Doug Hurley. Nyberg was part of the STS-124 space shuttle crew that delivered the Kibo laboratory module and Japanese robotic arm to the International Space Station in 2008 and was the first person to ever operate the shuttle robotic arm, the main station arm, and the Japanese arm. She's confident this mission will appeal to the adventure seeker in today's kids. I think a, a lot of it is based just on human nature, that we are all very curious people. Um, human beings like challenges, and this is an ultimate challenge 